So, um, yeah, but I think that let's start. Um, let me share my uh, screen. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, let me share this, uh, hold on. No, it's not this one, it's this one. Okay, um, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I think, you know, I, I see that, you know, um, I see some changes is, you know, um, I think Luis, I, yeah, I think you, you I did this work on Nahiro, I did this workflow on use case. I think, I think, you know, um, um, what's that, the Nahiro, you added um, the filter thing, right? Yeah. And then, I think Louis also updated this filter diagram to add to incorporate Nahiro's comments. And uh, let, let me see what other changes. I think that's pretty much the changes from from last spec. Um, so any any comments? Um, let's go through the comments again um, to see. Uh, we wrong. We wrong. Are you there? Hey. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I already closed your, your comments. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah. thanks. Okay, sure. Um, so Alex, is Alex online? No, I'm not sure what, what he means by no next state. What does that mean? Before performing, so we can discuss that because I would like to address this uh, comments. You say, well, so here is it. These days within a function workflow will wait on the arrival of an event or events from one or more event sources before performing their associated function and progressing to the next state. I don't know why he added no next state. I think that doesn't, I'm going to remove that. Is this okay with everyone? I remove this no. We should just check with him what he meant rather than losing context, I think. Okay, but I don't know when he is going to join this conference. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe in the cloud events. Because I, I don't know. It, it's just it's going to just progress to the next state. What does it mean progress to the no next state? I don't know what that means. I don't think that makes sense. But okay, we can leave that. Tim, I think it's fine. We can close that because he 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 just says a placeholder for for all this. I think we can resolve this. Any objection to resolve this? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's go through the next few. Now, hero. So parallel state. Uh, is that okay to resolve this, or you still have? Um... Oh yeah. So this one. Yeah. Okay. I see your comments. You tried. I know. Feels in the. So you already added, right? Um, which one are you talking about? Uh, I, I'm showing the screen. Can you see the screen, the end yeah. all? Yes. Are you talking about the condition? The, you said, you know, you here, you say you will add the not end and all field. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, I added with the three logical operator in, into the condition. Okay, I see. Comparison. Comparator. Okay, comparison operator. So not this one. And this one so you are doing this syntax okay not not and or hmm, interesting not and or not and or yes Free operator. so is this like a, is there any like a, when you say not and or is there any parentheses or it just uh, in sequence so you know you know my point oh uh, no Explain. What, so, what's, your, what's your point? So my point is, so he said, okay, so trace is this one, right? Not the next, not this one. What does this mean? Trace, if not this one, oh, okay, so I know what you mean. So if not, if not this operator, right? So when this not is that, I'm thinking about maybe add this inside the comparison operator, not the whole thing. What do other people think? If you say not, not the whole thing, what does that mean? This is uh, just a reverse. The, 
if operator is true, then that, that operator makes it the false. So I'm thinking, you know, so I, I think, you know, your uh, original point is like this, right? And the path of this traces end. So you are saying, okay, you think we need end or not operator too for the for the for the operator, right? For the comparison operator and all, not for the path and value, right? Not actually, because oh, I see. I see. because uh, not is useful in order to make more nested nested logical operator. For instance, not operator A and B or more complicated the, the not operator as possible if possible. Okay, so 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 I'm just thinking how this combine this not combined with the compar comparison operator or the end. You have an end here. And this end not okay, so this one and not this large and the not and larger than not this one, larger than that. Okay, I see. For, for, for instance, uh, uh, could you display the description of the operator just, just below? The, yeah, yes, yeah, operator, okay. Yes, operator, yeah. For instance, uh, if operator is EQ. And not EQ. Uh, no, no, just the EQ. Okay. Then not the operator is not EQ is equal to N EQ. So I made a comment here, N EQ would be redundant because if we introduce the not operator. Yeah, that's one, um, okay. So not would be redundant due to not, not equal due to not, so. Than greater than equal, string equal, string less than, string less than Q, greater than, um, greater than equal. So you are, so here you're all, so this all is just the, the following two all, right? Is that what you mean by all of these two? Yes, okay. or is the, uh, the or has a array. So in this example, there are two operators, two much uh, close. I see. Right? So yeah. those two are the word. Okay, I got that. I got it. Yeah. So now it's just one, and they are multiple, and yeah. then or they are of course they are multiple. So yeah. if you use this format. Okay. Please look at the description. I wrote a okay. description. Okay, got uh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The not field must be single match rule. Yeah, okay, I and, see. Uh, and or, uh, and or, or field must have no empty array. So I'm thinking about you have and, you have all, right? But the not, either we have not or we have say an um, EQ, right? So these two, we just need one, right? I mean, these two, we just need one, right? Maybe, yes. So, so then we, we can either have, you know, say not at the beginning, or we can just say in the operator, there's an, an EQ. That should be the same thing, right? Not the same thing, because not the operator can nest it. Can be nested. For instance, uh, so within the that not, we can have and or or. Oh, okay. But so uh, N -E -Q, N -E -Q cannot be nested. Mm -hmm. right? I know what you mean. So you were thinking, you know, you are, we allow the uh, embedded um, not and or, right? Something like that, right? Yes. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. I think if we allow that, then 
You could always apply De Morgan's here, but um, it feels like not a more natural than, you know, Could you speak they, up a little bit? Sorry. Who, who? Uh, yeah, just a moment. Let me see. Is this better? Yeah, now it's better. Okay. Um, I think the observation is that with not nesting, you may be able to express something more naturally as not X and Y, rather than needing to do the De Morgan's rule and say, yeah. Yeah, you know, course. the inverse of X or the inverse of Y. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I think that, that if you have and and or, not ends up being pretty useful to be able to express conditions concisely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that's, that's right. So I think we can just remove this not equal then. Right? Yeah. Okay, let's just do that. So how about the, um, how about this string equals string less a string? Okay, oh, you just, uh, so you just, uh, this uh, a string. Okay, you want a specific, uh, so great equal, so you, you specific spells out the string. So do you mean that if there's no strings that equal is just uh, a integer or something like that? Yeah. Integer or a double or just a number. Okay. Okay. String. Okay. Or oh, do we want this or we just say equal? We don't care whether it's integer or string, you know, when say equal, it just, uh, um, Mm, okay, I think probably it's, it's okay. We have this string. I think it's better. So let, let's. Okay, I think that. Uh, that let's, yeah, I think we need we, some type of information. Are we expecting that the string ones would be case insensitive or case sensitive? I think it would be. Uh, uh, that's a good question. So if there's different cases, does it mean different things? Yeah, I, I think that's we need to make a. Uh, uh, Decision. We can. We. I think we can make a decision here. You know how we. What do you think? Is Eva? Okay. Oh, it seems like equal would be natural for like bitwise comparison, which would work fine for two strings that were case sensitive. Um, and then I would expect the string versions to do something richer, which you might define as case insensitive. Um, I'm not enough of a expert on language encodings to know what other things we should say there, but they may also mean canonicalized in some format. So what do other people think? Would it be possible to, um, rather than having these string um, comparisons, to uh, determine the type of uh, the actual type of the value itself um, from from the JSON? I mean, typically um, strings are always inside uh, double quotes, um, and integers are not. Um, and the Boolean is either true or false, so we have a good idea of what the type of the value is. Uh, would it be, is it really necessary to have um, special comparison operators for the different types? Um, maybe we could uh, determine whether the, you know, the type, actual type of the value, whether it's Boolean, string, integer, from the, just uh, examining the um, uh, syntax of the, uh, the value field. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I think we have a two way. One is uh, introduce a type, uh, type variable, type uh, field, or introduce an operator for each type, like this. So Nahiro, you, 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 what's your point? You say you would yeah. like to uh, define the type or just a, just a generic great equal then and then depends on the syntax format of the 
Uh, I, I, I'm saying that uh, we have, uh, it seems to me, we have uh, two ways to do, distinguish the type. The one way is just, uh, uh, Ruiz said that uh, introducing a uh, type field. The another way is to create an operator for each type such as a string equal. Yeah, but I, I'm just thinking, you know, whether this is too complicated. We create, uh, you know, create this operator for each type. Um, I, I, I'm just thinking if, you know, we can, um, we can know the type by examining if the, I mean, if the system can know the type by examining the, uh, examining the, the, the syntax of the format of the, of the value, then we do not need this, you know, to define, to define that, it for exactly. different types. But is it that, true that, you know, we can do that? We, the, no. We can no, also, no. Because, because uh, if we compare, if we compare string five and, and the number five, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, state machine cannot judge which is, uh, which is uh, the, the user intent? Do you understand? You say the state machine cannot judge whether yeah. this is integer or this is a string? Yeah. Because uh, for, for instance, if I, I, if I specify the double quote five, so that is a string five, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, action return the number five, and uh, then the type mismatch happen, and uh, state machine cannot judge whether or not the action return value is wrong or the specified string number. The, Storing number I specified is wrong. Do you understand? Uh, do, do you understand what I say? No, I'm saying I mean, is, that. Isn't that something of a um, programming error? I mean, the intent of the, 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 the writer, the developer, is that you know, he's going to be comp comparing against a string. Okay, if he says, you know, specifies the value to be five in double quotes. If the function returns the string, well and good, if it returns a, an integer five, then um, that, that's, a, that's an invalid value, right? Yeah. Um, so, the intent yeah. is that, that, the, there is that what comes back or what is the input to this state is that it should be a, a string. And he's doing a comparison on a on a string uh, with a value of five. Now the type of the, uh, what is ex he is expecting is a type of string. Yeah, so if, if function, if function returns, the, if function returns the integer, and uh, it is uh, the correct, if we, if we know that the, uh, function returns the integer, that is correct, then the specifying uh, string five, if I specify string five, I, I am wrong. But, That's uh, correct. Mm. Yeah, but but the state machine cannot uh, judge which is uh, correct, me or function. function right, so function I mean, might have a well, five. All the state machine, you know, all the, the workflow specification is based on the, um, the value specified in, the, in that value field, okay? So that is the, the clue to what's going on. I mean, you, okay, imagine, so then imagine that um, we have, um, we're actually using these string fields, okay? The, these string, string comparison operators. 
what happens in the case where, again, we, we face the same problem. If you, if you specify a string operator and the value returned is actually an integer, um, what would you do in that case? I think the, my opinion is uh, that uh, state machine have to produce error, type mismatch error. Okay, so your, your argument is from the point of view of um, validation at runtime to make sure that uh, the, uh, the value, the type of the, the value is what is expected and we can validate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, yeah, of, if, if, so, you know, I would, again, this, these special operators, you know, the type specific operators, a little bit clunky to me, um, you know, if, if you, to my mind, maybe um, have a separate type field, it's, again, it's up to what people think, but, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I also feel the same way. I think, you know, if we have type specific operator, that's a bit too, um, doesn't look that, that good. Um, yeah, in order to, I mean, to for the runtime I'm checking, yeah, I think probably we can define a type instead of, you know, we have, you know, the operator, or, I mean, we have, you know, multiple sets of operators for, different types yeah i i think that that way is okay that is another way i think yeah because that's probably more i, I feel that's more simpler and lighter this is like, like you know to have a, you know different types operator so maybe uh yeah um uh, would you like to go for that direction nahiro so we remove this you know um type specific operator but we can add a type field to the value. Um, then we have a default type if it's not specified. How about, how about other, how other people think about this? Um, I guess from my point of view, it seems a little bit tricky to do the type matching at runtime without a good sense of what values will be there ahead of time. It seems like it's not clear why doing type matching at runtime rather than best effort gives us an advantage. So your point is that we we do not need to actually support this runtime uh, checking of the types. Is that your point? Well, uh, if if we do the if we do the typing dynamically at runtime, um, there's still a possibility to say we can't compare x with y because it just doesn't make sense. Um, but you can imagine having a value and a path item that's pulled out that both have compatible types and then you've chosen an operator that just doesn't happen to work with them and that seems like it's an unforced error so I would probably steer away from putting that in okay is my personal take mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I'm so go ahead the values that are actually returned from the, uh, say, the um, a function that's been invoked, um, it's, it's probably going to be in, in JSON. So um, the the, uh, the state machine has to interpret that JSON and to figure out what the the type is of that JSON value you know, in order to compare it with the value that's specified in this, um, in this field here. So again, it's the same, same issues. It has to interpret the encoding of the, uh, 
the, the JSON value. Yeah. Any other input on this? Yeah, I, I also think, you know, it's a little bit, um, I'm just wondering whether we need to um, address this at this level, you know, um, to make it, the, to make our model um, complicated. Um, I think the wrong time, you know, um, I agree with, uh, uh, I forgot, I do not know who, <laughs> I cannot recognize the voice. I think, you know, for the wrong time check, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's the best effort. I, I, I think that's, or if there is a way to do it, I think that, you know, the, the, when the, when the user, when the developer write this workflow, right, he should know, you know, what the function, the return value of the function, and uh, also the, you know, all this checking, he should know the type. And that function, you know, if that function returns another type, then it is supposed to return, then the type is supposed to return. I think that's a, the function's problem. Do we really need to address at this, um, this you know, the top level um, uh, configuration model? So now here, what's your, what's your take? Could we remove this and then later when we see there's really a need, we can uh, add that in? I, I think uh, the, the, at this moment, I would like to keep this issue further discussion later because uh, if we if we seriously think about uh, implementation i think uh, underneath luggage have to choose the operator of uh, string comparison or number comparison so so uh, in order to tell underneath luggage i think uh, my, my opinion is type information have to be written in the uh, uh, workflow language. So if we implement a state machine in Java, I think uh, the Java is a type specific language and uh, we need to choose the number comparison or string comparison. Uh, those are two different, uh, different methods. So, uh, I think uh, the type of information will be necessary when we try to implement it. Okay, I guess probably then we, um, I think, you know, we can maybe keep this as a, a open item for um, for more people to get comments. Yes. Uh, work, I mean, the, the, how to say, service work group to get comment. So we, okay, I think we can, I'm okay, we just keep it here, unless there's a strong objection. Um, but later, if people think this is not needed, we remove it. How is that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I see that. Um, so, so the choices, I think this come on, let me see, go to any more comments here. Okay, so this is the comments. Now here you have, right? You add this, okay, so you can close this, right? This one, this comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you will close this. So let's see the, okay, I think the Ivan just added some comment. Are the choices an order set of conditions? Yeah, that's my first question too. It is a order set of condition, right? You just evaluate in sequence. Is that right, Nahiro? Hello? Nahiro, are you there? Can you hear me? Could anyone hear me? Yeah, I hear yes. you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I missed your question. Could, could you? No, I'm sorry. I just see the, you know, the comment from uh, Eva. Maybe, I'm not sure I pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> could you clarify your question? Ivan just left, Cassie. Oh, Ivan just left? Okay. Yeah, it dropped off. 
Oh, okay. So I think Ivan's question, I, my understanding is, is this uh, evaluated in order or not? Just like, you know, for example, you have it here, right? You have not, so first evaluate not, and then you evaluate and, and then evaluate or. Uh, let's, let's see his comment. His comment? Is, is, uh, is, uh, is his question the order of evaluation? I try some other set of conditions to evaluate or are any matching conditions executed? What does that mean, matching conditions executed? Uh, choice is, uh, choice is an order. I think he's talking about maybe it's sort of incremental evaluation. I think what we're trying to get here is that the whole expression is evaluated and then, you know, there's a decision made on that, so. But the thing is that, yeah, I think this is, uh, okay, if that's a, this is a good question. So if like and is satisfied, and then also or is satisfied, then what's the next state? Oh. So if and is satisfied, you have a next state. If this next state is different from the, the this or next state, then what is the next state? Yeah, I think my understanding is uh, the the first element is the first priority. So it's an ordered it's an ordered uh, evaluation. Is that right? So as long as you have one match, you just execute it. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, could you add that to the um to say it's an ordered set of um it's ordered it's evaluation, and then the first one match stop. Nahir, could you add that? Yes. Okay, good. Um, yeah, if someone, could someone help writing the meeting minutes? Um, uh, um, so this is the one, and then are these are case sensitive, insensitive? So what's our decision with our case? I think, you know, we can just make a decision case insensitive or sensitive. If later people have other comments, we, we can change it. Yeah, I think it should be uh, case sensitive. Case sensitive, so different uh, um, uppercase, lowercase means different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can add that. So Nahira, yeah, if you could uh, add that too, that would be good. Case sensitive. Okay. So now let's come to the um, to the um, filter thing. Okay, um, so I think we need to match uh, these two. So here we say, okay, there's a event source. We have a filter from previous state. We have filter. When we go to the before going to function, we have filter. When coming back, we have another filter. And then when going to the, do we need these two filters between the two functions? Or we can combine these two filters into one. Because anyway, this filter is just filter the output from function one to the input. And then, you know, the result is input function two. Yeah, I mean, that could, I mean, it seems that seems an uh, obvious way of doing things. Uh, as long as we can fit it into the syntax of the, um, what we're proposing. So, um, you know, if, if we have, um, you know, or we, you could maybe call a request filter that goes to the um, function and then a response filter that comes back, that, that, that you're naturally attaching the filter to the request of the response. Now, if you're, um, considering having combining the you know the filters from one function to to the next function you have to consider how to do that in terms of the syntax yeah I see, that we, I see so um, I see. we just have to look at that and see if is there a convenient way of doing that so uh, and I think maybe we could look down to what Nahira has um, 
in his thing. So, uh, so again, uh, Nahira, I don't want to speak to your stuff, but uh, you have um, essentially, you've, you know, I like the way you've laid it out. You've got the, I think you say so you've got the state filter, the, I think it's an event filter and an action filter. And then within that, you've actually broken it down into, I think, an input filter, a result filter, or rather an input path, a uh, result path, and an output path. Um, again, uh, if, we, if we're looking at the um, action filter there, um, for each action you actually, or each function that's invoked, you actually have an input filter, which is essentially what I've described as a request filter that goes out to the, uh, the function at when it's invoked, a result path, which is equivalent to what I had before was a, a response uh, filter. Right. And then you, in addition, have an output path, uh, which I actually didn't have. Um, I actually added a question there on that. Um, and I think you've responded to that. So um, uh, maybe you could talk to that a little bit. Um, Yeah, hi, Nairo. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I think Louis' question is do we really need this output filter path? You have a filter input path. That means you know, you're going to filter the information before passing to the action, right? And then you know, when it comes back, you have already have a like, kind of like output filter, like the filter result path, right? To filter that. Yeah, this is very. There's another output. Yeah, this is very important. So please look at the bottom of this uh, document. The last, last picture, last figure. The further, further bottom. Oh, bottom? Yes, bottom, yes. Oh, yeah? Okay, uh, so I understand what you're saying. So really, uh, it's that result path is uh, used to actually combine the input value or the input JSON with what is returned from the um, from the uh, function. Is that is that? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, maybe. I think uh, the result path is used to transform the key. So, so here is a. The example. Mm -hmm. And uh, the update argument state, this is a no state. There is a identical function. Identical function means that uh, y equal x. So, uh, so the, in this case, the input path uh, the 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 output of a hello world is a pair of hello if then the specify input pass dollar dot payload means uh, the value of a payload so uh, the hello if then then this value this input passed to the function in this case, identical function. So that means return value is also hello if. Then hello if is stored into the result path. That is if dot value one. Then output path specify dollar dot if. So that means the the, the output value of Update our state is uh, value one colon hello if. So, so mm -hmm. in this process, the output output of hello world that is uh, the key is zero, and the output of uh, update arc 
key is value one. So that means the key is transformed. So in order to make, uh, in order to transform key, we need a result path. Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. So, um, okay. yeah, it, it might make sense that we need to do that. I, I think that, um, so essentially what you're saying is that we're combining the, um, what com comes in on the input into a, um, into the state with a, a value that's returned from the uh, function. Is that right? Am I reading that correctly? I, I, I didn't quite, sorry, I didn't quite understand, uh, you know, what you said. I didn't quite get that, you know. Um, so I, uh, I'm just thinking, so the input path, my understanding is that maybe, my understanding is the input path is, you know, the filter, right? Is to filter whatever comes from that state, whatever in that state, you filter it. And then the payload in that saved in that state, you filter it and then pass to the function, right? And then when the function result comes, right, you're going to filter the result and then saved. So that's the function result, right? And then when that, you need to pass to the, why you, when you need to pass to the next state, you have another filter for the next state. You can combine whatever. You can do that, right? Why you need two result pass and output pass? Yeah, let me let me explain. Could, could you go up? Yeah, go up. Okay, maybe you speak uh, a little bit low. <laughs> I have a hard time understanding. You know what you said. Uh -huh. A little bit below. What? Pardon? Uh, could could you move a little bit up? Oh, a little bit up. Okay. Uh, uh, no, a little bit. Uh, I think the other direction. Here? I down. think a little bit further down, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Down, down, yes. Further down? Go down, down, down. Further, further down. Here? Yeah. Here. So, yeah. Here. Here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit up. A little bit further down. I, I, I'd like to explain the example. The, the section example. Uh, could you move a little bit up? Up? Uh, no, the, the other direction. The other direction. Yeah, other direction, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, there. Yeah. right. So, the, the important is a premise. So we need to compose two functions. So one is hollow. The other is the same result. And the important thing is uh, the output structure of Halo is different from input structure of same result because the uh, key is different. The out output value of Halo is uh, the key is payload. So, uh, but but the uh, but the uh, input value of the same result, the key is value. So so as as is, we cannot compose two function, right? So you have function hello function save result input name string. Same result expecting to get the value in value one key. Right, so okay, I think I understand what you're saying. So basically the input to the second function, save result, has to have value, um, I don't know, 
value one is the key. Is that right? So what you're trying to do is convert the um, output from the hello function, function one, uh, from uh, having a key of payload into a key of value one. Is that what you're trying to do? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, and in order to do that, you have to have um, both the output filter and the uh, the out, the output path and the result path filters. Yes. Okay. We have the result path. We can that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think it, you know before we finalize on this, we should look at some, make sure we've got a good understanding of the the use cases that we may encounter here. So. There may be cases where, like you've got, say here is we want to transform a key value, you know, key in, in the JSON to a different key. There may be also cases where you may want to combine, you know, not just take the, inf the output from a previous function, but also maybe combine it with um, the input to the state itself. So. I think it might be worth considering uh, some different cases here. Um, although I think this is very good. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to combine that with a state, um, the input, the state filter result pass, that should have it, right? Right, so what, what I'm seeing there, I mean, that the state filter result path. Now the question is, does that combine the output from the um, uh, the output path of the of the last action with the input path to the state itself okay so uh, I think we may maybe need to make that a little bit clearer and maybe show a couple of examples on how that's actually done um, uh, so it, it's clear to what to what we're doing here. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, I think my understanding of this state filter result pass should do that combination. Can have that. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at this as closely as I should have, but it may well be the case. Um, Hira, you could probably comment on that. Yeah. Okay, good. I think that's good. Um, I'm thinking, you know, uh, we're diving into a very detailed discussion on the filter. Um, and so I think we're going to have another, on uh, the next meeting, we're going to discuss, yeah, how we should do with all this, uh, all the work we have put. It's a very good effort. I think it's a very good work, I think. Um, that's about it. Um, any other comments? Looks like we only have these two. These, I mean, Ivan's comments, I think is resolved. Um, if we can have a uh, Louis comment, yeah, we can probably take a look at this again and then see, right? That's about it. So for the arrows, how we are going to have um, preferred error codes of the state machine execution. Okay, um, we can probably, who would like to take the action item to write up some something about the errors? Well, I have suggested a couple of different uh, error codes that could be used here. So, um, uh, in the, in my comment over there, so it could be, you know, what I suggest is a timeout error, a, a fail failure error, or a, a match any. So essentially the, um, you know, anything that's doing comparison, uh, could use those values. Uh, do we need to define this at this at this specification level, like the arrows, or this should be out of the scope when the user define these models? Uh, what do you think, Nahir? I think this was your original comment on the uh, adding a predefined error codes. Yeah, well, the reason I added the, the error code section is that uh, the I think remember the the due to the the retry tag retry field. Right. So, so in order to describe the retry, I think we need a error code. Yeah, right. But have we 
we have defined retry. Have we added that or not? I forgot. Yeah, retry is there. Is there? Okay, so we put that error code maybe in the retry section, right? Together with the retry. So, so you just said, where's the retry thing? So maybe like a hero, would you like to put that the into expand that retry, please? Yes, but I think the, the deciding the error code is not urgent. I think I think we we the the the, the, the I think the, the priority the second priority I think the first priority is more. We have a lot of things to discuss. Okay, I think then let's just remove this section. You know, I, I don't want this back to dive into a very, very detail um, before we have, you know, we give, um, we get other people's comments. Uh, I think, you know, later if people are interested in try and then say we'd like to expand that to have more detailed information, we can specify that. Specify that. How's that? Mm, I, 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 I'm not comfortable to remove it because uh, I just want to keep uh, the section but uh, the context uh, is empty or is okay but uh, I think uh, we the keeping the keeping the section remind us to work on error code writer yeah I, I think you know so um but I would like you know if we keep I would like to make it complete. I think, you know, we can add that section later. This is not like a final document. Yeah. You know, anyone can add, you know, more thing to that. But, you know, I, I would not like to keep it, you know, just a section without anything, right? Mm -hmm. So either we write that or we could just remove that and later you say, if we want to dive into more details, we can add it. Okay, so in that case, I can add it. Such that uh, Louis uh, uh, suggested. Okay, you will add it, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so I did. Maybe describe. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before closing this meeting, I'd like to mention one thing. In the parallel uh, the use case. Parallel? Yes. So I made a comment in order to clarify the comment I last time made. Okay, so let me go to that parallel state. Yeah. Oh, where is that? Okay. Uh, where is that parallel state? Oh, yeah, I... I uh, not, not the, yeah, right? In the, in the use case section, so... Oh, in the use case uh, section. Okay. You want me to scroll up to the use case section? Yes. Six or seven, I think. No, no, use case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just below this uh, figure, I made a comment. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Just above the here. The, you have a comment? Yes. Stop, stop. Please stop. Okay. Go to the below a little bit. Was a was 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 2.6, I think. 2.4, 2.5, next one, 2.6. Here. 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 Please look at the parallel inside. The additional thinking needed on the parallel state comment proposed by Naohiro. So this is uh, derived from the meanings the last time. Then, could you, did you find the, the place I'm talking about? Okay, so, so which one are you? Okay. Oh, no. Please uh, move to the middle a little bit. Just above the graph. Here? Yes, yes, just above the graph. Okay. Did you find the 
Yeah, Nahira, could you speak to that a little bit? Um, I don't quite understand why you say that the, uh, it's gone again. Yes, yes, I'd like to explain this comment. Yeah, if you could. Yes, please stop the document, Kathy. Okay. Yeah. The, the point is that the, the, the my comment is uh, that, uh, please look at the flow. So there is four branches. The first one is parallel branch for AWS, second is for Azure, the third is uh, GCP, the fourth is IBM. Then the, each parallel branch has uh, identical sequence, the trans translate forward, translate backward, and the post result to struct. So this structure is two-dimensional array, right? Right. And uh, currently, uh, action array is one-dimensional. And uh, if we keep action mode, either parallel or sequential. So in case of we choose parallel for action mode, this flow cannot be expressed by the current operation state. So that is my concern. Okay, so what you're saying there is, okay, let me understand this, but so you've actually got in each um, parallel branch, you've actually got three actions, right? Sequential. So that you actually have three separate actions, a sequence of actions, yeah. so, and they are translate forward, backwards, and then post to Slack. Okay, so, so you, what you're saying is that this actually could be quite a common case where um, you actually have parallel branches with uh, multiple sequential actions in each one of them. Exactly. Yeah, um, so you're making an argument for having a, essentially a two-dimensional um, array or a configuration for uh, an operation state. Yeah, one uh, I mean, this this could be implemented by the parallel state as you as you've uh, as you've suggested. Uh, but all you're saying is that if we were to add some form of parallel state uh, with sequential actions, that would solve this particular use case. Yeah, but I wrote a comment here. I think uh, if we choose to use parallel state, but uh, I think. Uh, it seems to me it's overspec in this case because uh, mm -hmm. the each parallel branch doesn't have a parallel state inside or switch state inside. So in that case, we can use uh, operation state if we use uh, action mode. So, so, okay, let me try to understand. So parallel state can express this flow, can, can, can cover this use case, right? The hero, right? Yes. Yeah. So then what's wrong? Why, why, what, what's your point? So parallel state can already cover this. So your point is that... Uh, yeah, my point is that uh, operation state, operation state, if we keep action mode in operation state, so, so, Customer, the user can choose parallel action in the operation state, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. But uh, there is no nested parallel or there is no switch state necessary in this case. So, so we can, well, I think we should. Uh, the, we should allow customer to use the operation state with the parallel action. Okay. 
Yes. With parallel action. So you said we should use uh, operation, we should allow operator to, to have parallel action mode, right? That's your point, right? Yes, yes. I, I think we have, right? We keep it, right? Yes, but if we keep it, but the current spec has a one dimensional array, so this is not possible right now. So what you're saying is you'd like to have um, have two dimensional arrays added if you specify a a parallel action mode you'd have you could possibly specify a two dimensional array is that right yes my point is either removing the action mode in the operation state or allow two-dimensional array in the operation mode. Oh, okay, I got your point. So, okay, so you say either we remove that, then, you know, everyone is forced to go to a parallel state. Yeah, yeah. Or, or we keep it there, but you say keep it there, okay. But keep it there, okay, keep it there, of course, people can still say, okay, keep it there, it's, it just have, it's just one-dimensional, it cannot cover this case people is going to go to parallel state. Uh, I think that's, that's okay, right? I, I know your point, you, you just feel, um, so you, your point is either remove that parallel action. And last time I hear comments is that is that, that yeah, parallel but, action is a, it's a simplified um, way for users to specify, say, if just a one dimensional action. Yeah, they do yeah, not but, but, go to parallel yeah, but, state. Yeah, but typically each branch, each parallel branch is only one function is very rare, I think. Oh, you think it's very rare? Yeah, I think so. Because usually a summary function is very small function, specific, specific to single task. And I think in order to some amount of task, I think we need to compose. So in order to compose, I think uh, the, we need a sequence of uh, function. Yeah, but not necessarily, you know, the function could be big, could be small, right? We cannot now just say or predict that, you know, the use cases is parallel state um, with one dimensional function is very rare. I, 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 yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure whether we can say that. The, the, the reason because uh, the AWS allow us to only three minutes for one function. Yeah, but that's AWS, right? Yeah. Other vendor might not have that limit. Could be three minutes, could five minutes, yeah. it depends. We cannot be always restricted by how AWS implements that. Yeah, that's, that's true. But uh, if, if we force to AWS to extend the longer function, then I assume that the AWS doesn't take this standard. No, 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 we're not, uh, you know, for some, uh, but the thing is that that doesn't impact, say, we have a, um, we have a, a parallel state, one dimensional parallel state. Uh, I'm not sure whether we want to extend it to two dimensional because two dimensional, you can be three dimensional, you know. That's, we already have a parallel state to cover that, but if there's a simplified, you know, uh, if there's a use case that only need a parallel um, function, a parallel operation state with parallel action, then they can use that. Uh, it's just a, a, a simpler. Yes, I, I understand your point, but my point is that uh, only one function is rare for, for each branch. That is my point. Yeah, uh, I know, but I'm not sure whether it's really rare or not, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to discuss the, 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 because this is just my opinion. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I think at least it doesn't, it, it, it's, it's okay, right? The operational, uh, opera, the, what's that? The parallel state already cover this use case, right? And then it's, uh, um, and then if the user want to, if there are those use cases that doesn't need the parallel state, they can just go for parallel um, operation state with parallel function. Um, of course, it's one dimensional. Yeah. 
there could be use cases for that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the, I, as I commented in the last sentence, so in this uh, workflow, I think using a parallel state is overstate because, because it is not necessary. Mm -hmm. that, that is my point. But the thing is, if we have that, right, that become complicated too. Why not use just parallel state? No, if there's a... I'm thinking, if, but if you have parallel, okay, if we use that a two-dimensional operation state, do we still need parallel state? You... Yeah. So then we have too many different mechanisms, you know. If parallel state can cover it, then we have, so we have three, we have two different mechanisms to yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah, so why, but, uh, but, but my preference is in that case, I little bit feel uh, the action mode is uh, little bit related. Yeah, action mode is just a very simple case, you know, um, they are just, uh, you know, they have only parallel functions. That's it. I think there are quite some, quite some use cases on yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think uh, we, it, it is. Uh, it is better to clarify the use case which only one function is necessary in the, okay. in the parallel branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, we can add the clarification there. That's fine. Um, yeah. Then we can see how it goes, right? The other okay. use of um, the parallel state to cover it. No matter whether it's two dimensional, three dimensional, or more complicated branching, all those cases, the parallel state, I think, uh, covers that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, if you agree, I think we can. Or maybe you would like to remove this section or you just keep it there, that's fine. Yeah, I'd like to keep it. And uh, if you can, I'd like uh, you to add the use case, just you mentioned uh, the each, each parallel branch has one function. Okay, you say add a use case for that. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay, for that. Okay, for the just parallel, um, what's that? Parallel action, right? Yeah. Okay, we can do that. I think, you know, um, let's think about a use case for that. Uh, and otherwise, you, you just feel we should remove that, right? Uh, which one? Remove the parallel action? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that's all well over time. Um, so anyone is writing the meeting minutes? I didn't write the meeting minutes today. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, you, I, I just, I, I, just uh, I, I just mentioned that uh, I'm not saying to remove a parallel state. Mm -hmm. I, uh, let me, uh, if I, if I make you misunderstand me, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, we can remove a parallel state. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, I think that's important. We keep it there. Yeah. You see the parallel action. We might not need it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's your point. Parallel okay. action, yeah, not a parallel state. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I, I, I still feel keep there. You know, <laughs> so it's a simplified way to. Um, to just um, model some use cases. Okay, anyway, well, we're over time. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, Let's thank you very sync much. Up, um, sync up in the next meeting. And then, you know, um, I think we can discuss how we should, I, I'm thinking about wrapping that this up, and then we can um, put it into some GitHub and then open up for more comments. And that's uh, what I'm going to propose in the next meeting, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.